this cup pass from me. You're still more than I need. You're enough for me. You're enough for me. This is Norma. Uh, I know you're missing me and you like to see me, but wait, I didn't mean to say that. I meant to say that I'm missing you and uh, and I'd like to see you and I hope and I'll be so glad when we get back to church. And, and in the meantime, please stay safe. Hello, Oaklawn. Just miss you so much. Miss all those good hugs and handshaking. Just miss my friends and my Sunday school class and the people that we just love so much. Just be so glad when we can get all back together again. Thank you, Jesus. Pearlene is a hands-on person. She loves the church. Don't mind telling you. Good morning. So good to uh, be with all of you and just want to thank you again for joining us um, online today. Again, another great special day on our calendar of the year. This is Mother's Day and uh, I know it's a tough day to be sheltered in place and not be able to come to church, but uh, we're grateful for all of our moms today and want to say thank you for all that you do. Um, do have a little something I want to just uh, share with you in regards to Mother's Day, and uh, then we'll proceed this morning. This is called an open letter uh, to pastors, and for the last several years I've been sharing this, and I think it's so appropriate for this day. To all our mothers, to those who gave birth this year to their first child, we celebrate with you. 
To those who lost a child or a grandchild this year, we mourn with you. To those who are in the trenches with the little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains and carpet stains and clothing stains, we appreciate you. To those who experienced loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or running away, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes and prods and tears and disappointment, we walk with you. And forgive us, please, when we say foolish things, we don't mean to make this harder than it is. To those who foster, uh, to those who are foster moms, mentor moms, spiritual moms, man, we, we need you desperately. To those who have warm and close relationships with your children, we celebrate with you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance from your children, we, we sit with you. To those who lost their mothers this year or in recent years or at any time, we grieve with you. To any mothers, of course, who have lost their children this past year, we love you and we mourn with you. To those who experienced abuse at the hands of your own mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who lived through driving test, medical test, and the overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not turned out the way you longed for it to be. To those who step-parent, who God-parent, we walk with you on these complex paths. To those who envisioned <clears throat> lavishing love on grandchildren, yet that dream has not yet happened or not yet to be, we grieve with you. To those who will have emptier nests in the upcoming year, we grieve and we rejoice with you. To those who place children up for adoption, we commend you for your selfishness or selflessness and remember how you hold that child in your heart. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprised, we anticipate with you. And to all of our fur baby mothers, our dogs and cats and alike, we love all of you today. Hey, this Mother's Day, we walk with you. Mothering is not for the faint at heart, and we have real warriors in our midst. And so today, we remember our mothers, and we say, Happy Mother's Day. And we praise the Lord for all of you who are tuning in today. I want to remind you uh, to make sure that if your mother is still living, give her a call today and tell her you love her. I know that these days are difficult for visits if your mother lives close by and you guys have a game plan for visiting, uh, make that happen. Um, don't let a day go by without telling your friends and families and loved ones that you love them and you care about them. And so happy Mother's Day uh, to all of you out there celebrating today. Uh, so I um, want to say thank you to the worship team. Another great job today for leading us in music today. And let me remind you while you're watching this video, please share these videos and please comment in the comment section to let us know you're with us. It's so good for us to see your name, even if it's, hey, this is Jay and Samantha and we're here. Uh, we love to know that you're watching. We love to know that you're joining us. It gives us a sense of family and I wanna encourage you. Hey, in the next few weeks, we'll be laying out some plans for the summer I want you to be paying attention. Make sure that you're listening to all the one call phone calls that we're making. Make sure that you're reading all the emails that we're sending. Those are so, it's so very important. Every one we send now is so important with reminders and updates. So make sure you're doing that. Also, just be reminded if you're in need of something uh, and you can't get to it or you need some help, make sure you give us a call. We are here for you uh, in these difficult moments. <clears throat> well, I think our sermon series is going to take us one more week into uh, the book of James. I think this may be the last week we're in it, but God certainly has been good to us through this series. I know he's blessed me, he's encouraged me, and I hope that the same for you. I hope that you've been encouraged through this. I hope that you've been blessed through this. I hope that uh, God has given you some strength to endure trials through this. And uh, I'm thankful that the Lord led me in this direction so that we could all be encouraged uh, from the words of James, the half-brother of our Lord Jesus Christ, who walked 
this journey of faith with these early church Christians who were facing persecution and facing trial. So today we're going to read James 1, verses 13 through 17. And again, you see I've got a little different setting today, so um, follow along. I hope you have your Bibles with you as we study the Word together. Let me just again remind you, in this life, uh, no matter where we are on the journey, uh, it doesn't matter if you're in a pandemic, it doesn't matter if things are going great, in this life, sometime during this life, there will be testing. Trials and temptations are the, are the keys to the overall picture, I believe, of biblical discipleship and biblical character building. And you think about it, Matthew's account of the temptation of our Lord Jesus Christ dealt with both aspects of this, trials and temptation. Jesus was tempted to deny his own lordship and give allegiance to the God of this age. And he also endured the wilderness and the hunger of the wilderness and the hunger of his journey through fasting and praying. And so you see, even Jesus had to endure testing. So I'm going to look at verse 13 right now in James chapter 1. I hope that you'll follow along with me uh, as we dive into a really very sobering now portion of this chapter. James 1 verse 13, I'm using the uh, New American Standard Bible today. The Bible says, let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted by evil and he himself does not tempt anyone. Let me read that again. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, and he himself does not tempt anyone. So the subject here of, of love for God, because James ended verse 12 with, those who are faithful will receive the crown of life, and it's set aside for those who love him. And so James is on this topic, and this leads him to talk about a new aspect of our attitude towards trials. Think about and ponder this with me. What, what is my attitude towards God? What is my attitude towards God? What is my attitude towards God in, in the good times? What is my attitude towards God in the bad times? And do I easily point a finger and blame him for the problems of my life? Do I constantly question whether or not he's in control? Like when circumstances come into my life or things don't go my way, is it easy for me to point a finger and lay the blame on the Lord? And let me just say that if a Christian does not love God, and by the way, I believe it is very possible for a believer to get to a point where he or she does not love God. You may say, well, I love God, but we know what Jesus said. Love is a verb. It's an action. And if we're loving God, then the Bible says that we are keeping his commandments. And so if a Christian does not love God, a wrong attitude toward testing can certainly develop. Even Jesus thought it was necessary to encourage his disciples on this point. See, most of the time, trials and testing and temptation will cause us and others to notice the presence or the absence of the love we have for God in this life. So how are we to respond to trials and temptations? How are we to uh, navigate through this life? The important thing to remember is this, how we do respond to trials and temptations, how we do navigate through trials and temptations is very very important. So, James now comes to a subtle shift, if you will, in the way he uses the word paresmos, and that's the Greek word for temptation. From uh, a broader meaning of trial or testing, like in verses 2 through 12, to a more narrow meaning now of temptation or solicitation to evil here in verse 13. So, I believe this, that for every trial that we have, for every difficulty that we face, there is also a temptation to evil. Let me say that again. For every trial that we face, for every difficulty that comes our way in life, there's also a temptation to evil. Stay with me now. Just look at the life of Job. The troubles that seemed to overtake Job were his trials. But the temptation was when Satan tried to do his dead level best to get Job to curse God and die. You remember? Of course, we know the end of the story. Job endured the trials and he resisted the temptation that came with them. I read this uh, recently, and I believe it's so true. One of the temptations <clears throat> we may face in times of trial is the temptation to blame God for the inward inclination toward evil, which usually surfaces under stress. Wow, let me, let me say that again, okay? One of the temptations we may face in times of trials is the temptation to blame God 
for the inward inclination towards evil, which usually surfaces under stress. Like we absolutely know this to be true. You know this to be true. I know this to be true. That in times of distress, in times of pain, in times of uncertainty, all of those times can certainly push someone to the brink of falling back into self-destructive behavior, falling back into addictive behavior, falling back into an attitude that gives into the flesh more, willing to, more willingly. This is certainly why, man, we must take control during these difficult moments. Better yet, we must allow the spirit to control our minds. You know the old phrase, the old saying, the idle mind is the devil's workshop. So my prayer is that during this quarantine and during this stay at home, that you've stayed busy and that you've continued to be yielded to the Spirit's control. Because James is getting at a point here that during times of distress, during times of idleness, during times of anxiety, man, the, the enemy is hard at work trying to give us to give in to the temptations of this world. And see, if we are loving God the way that we should, we will not say that our desires for evil or our desires for sin are God's responsibility. Sin is serious business. You know this. Psalm 45 tells us that God loves righteousness, <clears throat> but he hates iniquity. And look, I don't have to tell you this today. Sin is, is, is universal. Sin is deadly. And we cannot and we are not to blame God for our bad behavior. And, and we certainly are not to justify our bad behavior because of whatever situation we might find ourselves in today. Now think all the way back with me to the Garden of Eden. <clears throat> in the Garden of Eden, who did Eve blame? Eve blamed the serpent. And then who did Adam blame? Well, Adam blamed Eve and then blamed God. And in this day and time, so many avenues have been invented or created for guilty people to shift their blame to. We cannot shift blame. Can't do it. I've got to take responsibility for me. I can't shift the blame to my parents. I can't shift the blame to my circumstances. I can't shift the blame to other people in general. This desire to shift blame is as old as Adam. And yes, there are many that try to blame God for their sinful behavior or the consequences of their sinful behavior. And according to God's holy word, we cannot say, well, God made me this way. Or God made me do this. And we certainly cannot say, well, the devil made me do this. James clears this up by telling us that God cannot be tempted, nor does he tempt. God's not personally the agent of temptation, but we absolutely know that God does allow others to engage us in temptation and the enemy to engage us in temptation. Of course, Job is a great example of this. So now let's move on to James 1, chapter 14. If you're following along, the Bible says, but each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. But each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by his own lust. The words carried away here in verse 14 have the idea of being, being lured. You people, you guys who are fishermen, or you men and women who are fishermen, or maybe you hunt, you know exactly what it means to lure, uh, lure your game in. Just like hunting or fishing, the game is lured from its hiding place. So then a man is lured from the safety of self-restraint to sin. To, to draw away from safety. And last week during our midweek uh, Zoom session, man, I hope you guys are tuning in for those. We discussed the importance of not moving away from the safety of the Father. Think about this. That when we feel abandoned by Him, uh, it's not really that at all. For He will never leave us nor forsake us. But many times, we are the ones who are positioning ourselves further and further and further away from the safety of God the Father by being lured into the trappings of sin and selfishness. And see, don't miss this. All of Satan's efforts, all of Satan's efforts to lead people into evil and all of the world has to offer in the way of excitement or enticements for the child of God would have no effect on a person at all unless he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. There's no temptation for us unless we respond and find the evil in some way desirable. See, here, here's what James is saying. Ready? You cannot say, well, the devil made me do it. We've already seen that you can't say, God made me do it, or I'm blaming God for this, or he allowed this me to do this sin, so to speak. And you cannot say, well, the devil made me do it. You can't say that either. 
No, actually, you made you do it. I made me do it. The enemy may have been the avenue of temptation, but your evil desires, my evil desires are, man, that's the cause of my sin. And you also cannot say, well, God made me this way. We are sinners because we are sinners. Romans 5, 12 says, therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world and death through sin, and so death spread to all men. Why? Because all have sinned. Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and fall short of God's glory. And see, we cannot charge God's, God foolishly. We must be very careful. The responsibility is our own because of the wickedness of my heart. The Bible says that the heart is deceitful above all things. Who can know it? Jeremiah 17, the heart is more deceitful than all else and desperately sick. Who can understand it? And so we got to understand, listen to me carefully, that we sin when we are drawn away, when we are lured away. And that's what we have to be careful for, not to be lured away during these times of, 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 uh, of quarantine. And these times, we should be taking time to self-reflect and get alone with God and spend more time in his word. But we have to be careful and we have to be on guard. Let's move on to verse 15. James 1 verse 15 says, Then when lust has conceived, it gives birth to to sin. And when sin, when it is accomplished, it brings forth death. Now, let me just warn you. These are hard verses to preach and teach. I know they're hard verses to hear. This is a difficult topic, but folks, listen to me. This is God's word. And aren't you glad that he gives us guidelines and guardrails? Aren't you glad that he gives us the instructions that we need to follow him in these difficult times? Aren't you excited and encouraged that he gives us the opportunity to read his word and to overcome evil in this world. Man, I sure am. One commentary stated it this way. The language James is using here is the language of childbearing. Desire experiences a conception, if you will. And when it has conceived and then it gives birth to sin. If you think about the temptation process that you and I go through, man, this passage is incredibly helpful. Desire, James says, is the mother of sin. Think about this. Then, after sin is birthed by our own lust, it grows. Think about it. And eventually reaches maturity, and as our verse says, it becomes fully grown. Then, sin bears an ugly child of its own, and that child is death. Death is then the offspring of sinful lust and desire. That's why it's so important that we take temptation seriously. That a part of life is not only testing through trials and how we respond to trials, but also how we respond to temptation. And then sin, when it is fully grown, out of control, eventually kills. Perhaps not physically at first, but little by little, listen to me carefully today. Listen to me carefully. Sin kills. It puts its hands upon morality and it kills it. It wraps its nasty paws around your character and it kills it. It will grab a hold of your health. And yes, perhaps at some point it will physically kill you. It will get its tentacles wrapped around your marriage and your home and your peace of mind, your kids. And I could go on and on and on. We know that sin kills. And listen to me carefully. Even if you're not a believer in Jesus, you might be listening to this broadcast and you're like, I don't know about that Jesus stuff. But I, you know, all of us know there's something built in on the inside that says, morally, uh, uh, decisions that we make that are immoral, that go against moral standards, that go against the teachings of God's word eventually cause us to go on a downward slope that it, can, that it can eventually affect us physically, that can harm us and then harm the ones that are around us that we love. So we must be cautious and careful. Sin kills. Sin kills. Romans 6.23 says it clearly. For the wages of sin is death. And sin has thousands of agents to put this hit out on your life. We know that the ultimate cause of sin is spiritual death. The Bible says that we are all walking dead. We are dead in our trespasses and sins until Jesus saves us, praise the Lord. Then we are born from above and that new life occurs. But as it stands... Even as a believer in Jesus, I can ignore the Spirit of God and I can choose to follow after the flesh and follow after the old nature and that eventually leads to death. Death. Let's look at verse 16. 
James gives a stern warning. He says, do not be deceived. Children of God, don't be deceived. Satan is cunning. He is crafty. He is subtle. And let me just tell you this this morning. He knows your weakness. He knows my weakness. Don't be deceived into thinking you can handle it. We must stay on guard, especially in times like these where our minds are vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. And that's the reminder today. This is the challenge today. Stay on guard. Stay focused. Last week, we talked about holding fast in difficult times, making sure that we don't quit, running the race with patience to win the prize. And this is the same context, just different kind of circumstances. Temptation's going to come our way. It's important that we protect our minds and we protect our thoughts and that we hold fast when it comes to temptation coming into our life, just like Jesus did. We fight temptation with the Word of God. And that leads me to 1 Corinthians 10. Verse 13, I want you to write this verse down. I want you to put this verse on your fridge this week. I want you to keep it at the forefront of your mind. The scripture says, no temptation has overtaken you. But such as is common to man, but God is faithful. Aren't you, aren't you glad of that? God is faithful. Say that right there in your living room. God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able but with the temptation will provide the way of escape also. Every temptation that comes your way, you may feel bombarded, but according to God's word, the promise is, is that God will provide an escape. And this right here assures me in knowing that, yes, God allows these to come our way so that we will be tested for the same results as going through trials, that we might grow to maturity and grow to be more like Christ. He says, God will provide the way to escape so that you will be able to, and here's our word, endure it. Endure it. Nobody said the Christian life was easy, man. This is a, this is a battle, and it's not against people, against someone else. I'm not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. And you are assured from God's word that you can overcome with the help and the power of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. But you must endure Fight with the Word of God. Use God's Word to help you overcome temptation. Does God tempt you? No. Does He allow you to be tempted by the enemy? Yes. So here's what Paul's saying. No test or temptation will come your way that's beyond the course of what others have had to face. All you need to, and I love the scripture that says Jesus was tempted in all points as we are yet without sin. Come on, he knows exactly what you're going through. He knows exactly what you're being hit with. So my encouragement, my challenge to you is to stay, stay strong in the battle against the enemy. All you need to remember is that God will never let you down. He'll never let you be pushed past your limit. He'll always be there to help you get through every temptation that you face. Now, here's the hope this morning. I'm wrapping this up. Sin is the ultimate taker. Let me say that again. Sin is the ultimate taker. Ultimately, it brings forth death. We talked about that. I mean, as the old song says, you may know this song, sin will take you farther than you want to go, and it will keep you longer than you want to stay. It's the ultimate taker. But praise be to God. We briefly mentioned this last week. God our Father is the ultimate giver. God our Father is the ultimate giver. He offers free gift of eternal life to those who will receive it. He offers the gift of the Spirit of God to those who receive his salvation, his free gift of life, to those who place their faith in Jesus. He gives us the gift of the Spirit of God. He gives us blessings and encouragements. He gives us his word. He is the ultimate giver. And James 1.17 says this. Check it out. Every good thing given and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow. See, human beings have been known to give some pretty good gifts. Man, I've received some good gifts in my life. I love getting gifts. I love Christmas. love my birthday. It's, I love getting gifts too. Part of my nature. I love giving gifts. 
And man, I've seen some people give some extravagant, extravagant gifts, some pretty good gifts, but there is only one who can give a flawless, perfect gift, and that is God, our Heavenly Father. And so listen carefully. Sin, sin birthed death. We talked about that. Temptation, desire, sin birthed death. But God, check this out. If you're a believer in Jesus, don't miss this. God birthed you. God birthed you. What did Jesus say to Nicodemus in John 3, 16? He said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. And if you look into the original language, that has the idea of being born from above, that the Spirit of God was at the moment of your salvation. You, you, who were dead in your trespasses and sins, now walk in the newness of life. And to that we say, to God be the glory God birthed you. What a gift from God our Father who gives us life everlasting, who gives us the ability through God's Spirit, who has quickened us from death to life to now overcome. We no longer have to be bound by the chains of sin. And sin should no longer have dominion over us. I'm going to close with this passage of Scripture, two verses. 1 John 2, 28 and 29. John says, now little children, he's talking to believers, he's talking to Christians, abide in him. Abide in who? Jesus. Abide in Christ. Jesus used this language often. Abiding simply means walk with me. Walk with me. Be obedient to me. Follow me. Abide in him so that when he appears, we may have confidence and not shrink away from him in shame at his coming. Verse 29, if you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who also practices righteousness, and here it is, is born of him. Isn't that awesome? If you are a child of God today, you're born again. New life. You have the spirit of God inside of you, who gives you the power and the ability to overcome sin. And John says here, if Jesus, or when Jesus appears, and by the way, he could appear. I don't know when he's coming. Boy, I, I, I feel like he's coming soon. My prayer in the last few weeks has been, even so come Lord Jesus, when he appears, man, John's like, abide in him so that you will have confidence and not shrink away in shame. How do you do that? Well, you do that by abiding in him. You do that by practicing righteousness. You do that by saying no to temptation. But you do all of that through the power of the Holy Spirit of God and through the word of God, the sword of the spirit, that gives us the power and the ability to overcome. Listen, if you're listening to me today and you haven't been taking time, daily time, in God's holy word, today is the day to start doing that. I'm telling you. This is the power source. The word tells me in Psalms, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to the word of God. The Bible says that his word is a light into my feet, a, a light into my path, a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. Where am I going to find strength to overcome? And I'm going to find it within the pages of his holy word, this book. And as the re return of the Lord Jesus approaches, let's be careful each day not to dethrone Jesus as king in our lives. And we're all good at that. Daily, we have to make sure we don't do that. Who is sitting on, who, who is sitting on the throne of your life today? Who is? Ask yourself that question. Are we following Jesus and his lordship? I want to encourage you today. It's time to dethrone self and make Jesus the Lord of our lives. Time to get in the word and figure out how we can be overcomers. Trials bring about maturity the endurance. God's using it to test us. Temptation, he's also testing us. He's allowing it to happen for a purpose. That you might one day bring him glory by becoming more and more like his darling son, Jesus Christ. I gave the gospel just a bit ago. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your Savior, let me say this this morning. I want to encourage you to listen to the Holy Spirit who may be speaking to you right now. And I pray that God is tugging at your heart even now for by grace are you saved through faith, 
and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. I want to encourage you today. If you've, if you've come to the end of your rope, recognize, yes, I am a sinner. And after today's message, all of us should know that truth. All of us miss the mark. I am a sinner. I'm in need of a Savior. You can come by faith today and receive the free gift of eternal life. It's not about a prayer, but if you were to pray, you pray a prayer, you could say something like this. Jesus, I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I recognize, Lord, I'm at the end of my rope. I surrender that to you. And God, I believe in you for everlasting life. I believe in the work that you've done. Nothing saves a person but faith in Jesus. And I believe, God, I believe in you for everlasting life. I believe that you died for me, you were buried, and that you rose again to conquer sin, death, hell, and the grave. And if you receive Jesus' free gift of eternal life today, if you, if you place your faith in Jesus, you will have it. And we praise the Lord for that free gift today. Uh, if you receive Jesus as your Savior today, listening today, uh, I want to encourage you to let us know. My email is at the bottom of the screen right now. We'd love to hear from you. and Let us know, hey, I, I place my faith in Jesus Christ. We'd love to talk to you more about what it means to follow him wholeheartedly, what it means to follow him and believer's baptism. And if you would like a copy of the sermon notes today, We'd love to send those to you. Uh, you can just email me right here at the bottom of the screen, j at oaklawnlife.com, j at oaklawnlife.com. Thank you so much for listening in today. I appreciate you so much. Uh, I pray that the messages have been a blessing to you. My prayer is that we can get together sooner than later. Looking forward to that. Be listening for important information coming in the next couple of weeks. And hey, I want to ask you to join us each Wednesday. Um, if you think it's important enough to join on Sunday, we're digging in the Word on Wednesday, too. Wednesday nights at 7. We move the time to 7 to give folks a chance to have supper with their families and then join us. Uh, join us Wednesday night for more time in the Word. Um, my prayer is that our people here at Oaklawn uh, would uh, fall in love with Jesus so much to the point that they can't get enough of His Word. They can't get enough of Him. And that's my prayer. I love you very much. God bless you. And we'll see you next time. It was another great morning hanging out with you guys again today. We love hanging out in the comments and the chat section with you guys. Take some time right now. Scroll up. Say hi to somebody that maybe you haven't talked to in a while. Uh, let's use these chat sections to stay connected during our service. Uh, so just comment. Say hi. Like somebody's comment. Uh, let's stay connected to one another. Uh, on the kids side of things this morning we're going to put up a memory verse challenge uh, there'll be a, a graphic and our memory verse song will be posted uh, any kid that will make a video saying our verse for this month and post it a video of it in our in the comments underneath that graph uh, we'll be sending you a free chick-fil-a sandwich that have been donated by our chick-fil-a here in kernersville uh, so memorize the verse say it uh, we look forward to seeing those videos coming in uh, throughout this week there won't be any uh, youth group tonight no youth group zoom uh, it's Mother's Day. Teenagers, find a way to make your mother feel loved and appreciated today. Uh, we look forward to seeing you guys next week. Uh, church, let's continue being the church. Let's continue reaching out to our neighbors. Uh, let's find somebody uh, in need this week, and let's do our part to meet that need. There's plenty of ways you can get involved. Reach out to us, and we can get you connected uh, with a meaningful way where you can make a difference this week. We love you guys. We miss you guys. We'll see you back here next Sunday.